Hi, I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Today we're going to show you how to do a field inspection so you can function check your Glock and make sure it's working properly. The first thing we're going to do is be safe. So before we do anything with the firearm, we're going to put on some safety glasses. Now we're not firing the gun, but there's the chance that a spring may come flying loose and get into your eyes. So anytime you're working on a firearm, uh, you know, even if you're just cleaning it or disassembling it, field stripping it, it's a good idea to put safety glasses on. The next thing we need to do is unload the pistol. So we're going to strip the magazine out of the pistol and we're going to do a chamber check. And we're going to point it in a safe direction and pull the trigger. Now, now that we've established the gun is empty, we're still going to obey rule number one that we're going to treat every gun as if it's loaded. So I'm going to be careful where it's pointed, even though I'm absolutely sure it's loaded, unloaded. Now, the first thing we're going to do is check some of the things while the gun is still assembled. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull down on the slide lock. And with the slide forward, there's pressure on it, so I should not be able to pull down on the slide lock. Now I'm going to pull the slide back a little bit and pull down on the slide lock. And now it should be free. The next thing I want to check is the trigger safety. So I'm going to pull on either side of the trigger without actually getting on the trigger safety and the trigger should not pull. And then I'm going to put my finger on the trigger safety and see if it does work. The next thing I want to check is the recoil spring. So now that I've pulled the trigger, I'm going to hold the trigger back. I'm going to pull the slide all the way back and I'm going to ease it forward until we get to this point. You'll feel it. There's a, a definite stop. And then I'm going to let go of it e easily to see if the gun goes fully into battery. That last little quarter, three quarters, three eighths of an inch is what we're looking for. If the slide does not go into battery like that, then that's an indication that you need to change your recoil spring. And then the next thing we want to check is the magazine spring. So we're going to take an empty magazine, insert it into the pistol, and then we're going to run the slide vigorously and see if it locks open, which it does. If the slide did not lock open, then that's an indication that maybe the um, magazine spring is a little bit uh, uh, fatigued and is not pushing up on the slide release lever. Or it could also be that the slide release lever has got issues. So it could be one of those two things. All right, so that's what we're going to check with the pistol assembled. Now we're going to disassemble it, and I'll show you some of the things we need to look at. I'm going to take a look at the barrel and I'm going to look for bulges on the barrel. I can do that by feeling it. The other way I can do it is by actually inserting it into the, the front of the slide and that will tell me if there's any bulges on the barrel. I'm also going to check the, um, the locking lug area to make sure it's in good shape. There's no chips, there's no cracks. And I'm going to check the chamber to see if there's any cutting from or gas erosion and that the feed ramp is smooth there's no burrs on it. Now I'm going to inspect the slide and the first thing I'm going to do is point the slide nose down and then I'm going to push in the uh, firing pin safety and the firing pin should go forward which it did. I can see the firing pin nose sticking out of the breech face. So I know that the firing pin safety is releasing the firing pin. Now the next thing I want to do is make sure I don't have push by. So I've reset the firing pin by pushing it back up in there. And now I'm going to actually push on the firing pin to make sure it won't go down with the safety in place. And then the last thing I'm going to do with the firing pin safety is I'm going to push the safety in and then I'm going to rattle the slide back and forth to check that the firing pin has free movement. Now going to the receiver, I'm going to look at the, uh, the slide release lever. The default position is down, so I'm going to pull up on it, 
and let it go down. Make sure that it snaps back into place. And then the last two things I want to check are the drop safety and the trigger reset. So I'm going to push down with the trigger forward. I'm going to push down on the cruciform part of the trigger bar and it shouldn't move. That's the drop safety part of the trigger. And then I'm going to push on the extension of the trigger bar that releases the firing pin safety. I'm going to push forward on that and then pull the trigger. I do that so that I don't wear out the parts. Yes, you can just pull the trigger like that, but you're actually uh, um, uh, going to wear the parts prematurely if you do that. So you're better off pushing a little forward pressure, then pull the trigger. With the trigger in a rearward position, I'm going to see if the trigger bar resets when I push this in, and it does. I'll give you a close-up on that so you can see what it looks like. All right, so as a close-up, once again, with the trigger forward, I'm going to push on the cruciform part, that's the cross-shaped part of the trigger bar, and it shouldn't move. That's the drop safety. There's a ramp that that's sitting on, and the trigger bar should not drop while it's in the forward position. Then I'm going to put some forward pressure on the uh, extension of the trigger bar that hits the um, firing pin safety. Then I'll pull the trigger. With the trigger in the rearward position, I'm going to push in on this part and see if the trigger bar resets. And you can see it popped up. I'll do it one more time. All right, so that's all functioning properly. Okay, so now that we've function checked everything, it's time to reassemble the pistol. And I like to run the slide a couple of times to make sure it feels the way it should. And a couple of safe dry fires, keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction. And you're good to go. So those are the basic steps for doing a field inspection for functionality of your Glock pistol. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.